The Violence Against Women Act, VAWA, comes up for reauthorization every couple years, and it usually passes with bipartisan support. But it's an election year, so this year when it came up, it was met with harsh opposition. Democrats, hearing the loud, long pleas of feminists and many national domestic violence agencies, sought to expand the coverage of VAWA so it can include more people, especially protection for the groups most vulnerable, uh, gay, lesbian, and transgender victims, Native Americans, and undocumented workers. Instead of heralding the opportunity to serve more victims of violence, Republicans stripped the expansion of services from the bill. I promise you I don't say this to be partisan. Uh, I'm sure you're guessing what I am, but I, I promise you I don't say that to be partisan. I actually say it very specifically as a white, cisgender, documented middle class woman. We as a nation, and yes, we as my beloved feminist movement, have for far too long acted in ways that show that when we say women's rights, we actually mean white, straight, documented women's rights. When we say something happens to women, like even in our lexicon, as if we're all one homogenous blob anyway, we're usually talking about white women. Have you heard that statistic that women make 77 cents to the men's dollar? It's a white woman to a white man's dollar. In fact, black women make on average 68 cents to the white man's dollar, while Latino women make on average 59 cents. So if we as a nation and we as social justice activists don't center the lives, needs, and experiences of women of color, queer, trans, disabled people, we're doomed to repeat the mistakes that we've made before that have taken lives. Um, the, the type of violence that is going on with the Violence Against Women Act, that type where mostly male politicians decide they can control our bodies, is also going on with regard to the definition of rape. So have y'all heard about that? Todd Aiken, the legitimate rape dude. Yeah, uh, the dude who's right. Sorry, I, um, sometimes I forget that I, that annoys adults. Um, where, where uh, so the, he's running for Senate in the state of Missouri. He's already in the Congress, and he said that if a woman is the victim of legitimate rape, then her body has a way to shut that whole thing down. Yeah, um, by that he meant pregnancy, I think. Um, and yes, this guy is an individual idiot, and in fact, I speak for no one else except for me when I say it scares the absolute crap out of me that we have people who want to run the country and make decisions about women's bodies who have no idea how they work. But, uh, that aside, more than being an idiot, it wasn't a mistake. Uh, so last year, the GOP tried to change the definition of rape as it applied to Medicaid recipients applying to be able to get an abortion, be it the rape exception, the Hyde Amendment. The Hyde Amendment prohibits any federal funding from going to abortion via the Medicaid program. Um, and so there's a very narrow exception. If a woman is raped, she can possibly get an abortion. This exception in 2010 was used 51 times. Um, so they wanted to change the definition of rape in that bill from rape to forcible rape. Wait, isn't rape forcible by its very definition? Or perhaps they are imagining that marital rape is not legitimate rape. Or that a woman raped while drunk or drugged was not legitimately raped. It didn't pass, but you should just know, legitimate rape was not a mistake, it was a policy point. Which gets us into rape culture. What is rape culture? Rape culture is officially a culture where sexual assault, rape, or, and rape are common, and in which prevalent attitudes, norms, and practices in the media normalize and even condone and promote rape and sexual assault. But what is it really? <coughs> rape culture is where women are uh, assaulted while wearing a short skirt or drunk are said to be asking for it. Rape culture is the New York Times adding that a 12 year old who was gang raped liked to wear makeup in the story, as if that mattered. Rape culture is telling college women, you, not to drink too much and watch your surroundings at all times lest you be raped, but very rarely telling college boys not to rape. So at this point, I want to, like, assure all of the men in the room that one, I, I personally don't hate you, feminism doesn't hate you, and mostly I'm not blaming individual men or even men in full for rape culture. 
men are actually victims of the rape culture and all the pressures to comply with whatever the current definition in your culture of masculinity is. Some young men drink more than they would want, or dress differently than they would want, or even date a different gender than they would want in order to be seen as man enough. For many, it's a safety thing. And I can't even imagine what it feels like to be seen by many women as a possible predator just because I'm a man. I know plenty of men who are incredibly pissed off by the argument that women have to stop rape because men are simply capable of not being rapists. It's just not true. Say gender norms form one whole circle of human existence. When you cut it in half into two constructed roles, male and female, you deny each side half of the human experience. And on top of that, you deny folks who don't identify with gender they are assigned or with gender at all, which is perfectly natural considering gender is a construct, you deny many people the right to a human experience. Gender roles, rape culture, not good for men, not good for women, not good for anyone. So I've explained all the bad things. Um, there are many more, I'm sure, you know. But I, I want to talk about, because I'm running over because I talk a lot, um, that uh, what does this mean for our millennial generation? For us. Um, that's what they call us, by the way, it's the millennials. Um, well, for one thing, I'm incredibly sick and tired of hearing that we are apathetic, or that we don't realize that violence is occurring right in front of us. For many of us, it's not just in front of us, but also on us. You've heard about this war on women that's going on? Yes, well, there's a war on women, and our bodies are the battlegrounds, and we know it. Just ask any young woman who has ever had to get permission from her parents to have an abortion or any young person, male or female, who has ever gone to the pharmacy to get emergency contraception, which is their legal right, and been told, no, I don't believe in it, so I'm gonna deny you access to medical care. Our generation is, is not apathetic. They need to shut up about that. We are angry. We are not the future, and we are the right now. Um, I will say that the best way for them to get them to shut up about that we're apathetic is to go out and vote. If you're not registered, register. This is how we have power. This is how things happen to our generation that we don't like. When they think that there are no consequences for them at the ballot box, they go, oh, we need to throw someone up under the bus here, so let's do it to young people on student loans. Let's do it to young women on access to healthcare services. We have to go vote. I will also say that there is a very vibrant young feminist movement in this country. I'm very sick of people telling me young feminism is dead and there are no young feminists. Hi! And all of those who, who raised their hands. Um, I, I won't go through the, the waves of feminism, but I, for those of you who know what I mean, uh, I, I call us the fourth wave of feminism. Not for, but F-O-R-T-H, because movements have to move forward. Um, and we are, as millennials, mostly radicalized online. Do you know what consciousness raising groups are? So for those of you who don't, in the 70s, there were feminist groups that got together where women did that thing I was describing earlier, where you share stories and realize that you're not crazy and not alone. Our generation has done that on blogs. Like, we radicalize each other in mostly online spaces. And a lot of our organizing takes place either entirely online or with online and offline components. So a couple of examples of that. Uh, how many of you are on Twitter? Oh my goodness. You know how much that's changed? Like two years ago I'd ask that question, like three people would raise their hands and I would go, oh no, now I'm gonna teach people Twitter. Um, because I'm obsessed with Twitter. Uh, so there was a, an extensive Twitter campaign um, about HR3, which was that forcible rape bill. No one in the media was paying attention to it, no one was doing anything about it. And then young feminists started tweeting at representatives on Twitter. So here's a, an active tip. Representatives have opened the line of communication by being on Twitter, so you need to talk to them there. Because it's a public forum, and if they don't respond or they respond like an apple, there's a record, and you can use it to hold them accountable. So young feminists got HR3 to trend. 
which then made the national media pick it up, which then made Democratic women senators start coming out furious about it, which then made it go away. That started online. That started with young women caring about our health. Um, I, I don't know if you all have heard about Holla Back. It is a fabulous um, app and program in which young women, um, the young women invented anyone can use to combat street harassment. So basically, if someone's street harassing you, you turn around, you take a picture of him or her, and you put it on the internet. You send it in the app, publicly shamed, and you're also reporting the location of harassment so that as street harassment violence activists, um, they do the research, they know uh, where the most harassment is happening. Another app that I would really recommend is called Circle of Six app. Like, write it down and download it, please. Circle of Six is um, an app that was designed by a young feminist and a friend of mine um, that was actually uh, commissioned by the White House, the Office of uh, Violence Against Women, Women Against Women, and uh, basically it's a circle, and you have six of your friends, and you can press a button, so if you're on a date that you're scared or you need to get out of, um, you can send them a text message that says, please call me, I've got to get out of here. Um, or there is another one that can send your selected person your location, and then there is one big center button right there in which you can call 911 um, and try to get help. And so those are both programs that were, um, that were started by young women. And the last one I'll say, just because I think it's cool, is Texas has this stupid new law that doctors have to um, lie to women before they get abortions. So they've got to tell them that abortion causes breast cancer and increases the risk of suicide. It does neither of those things, and a medical person has to say them because Texas says so. Um, and so there were a bunch of us who were pissed off online and thinking, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Doctors have to lie to their patients and women have to lie there and listen to this. What is going on? And then we were like, wait, do they have to listen? So there's nothing in the law that says the woman actually has to hear it. So people were like, I pass. So people from all over the country use the internet to raise enough money to buy iPads for abortion providers in Texas to give to their patients so that they didn't have to hear the lies. Didn't solve it completely, but it's a bit of a solution, right? Um, and so as it happens, and these are my experiences, Texas, New York, traveling across the country, but as it happens, fourth wave feminism or Millennial feminism, or I don't actually care what you want to call it, some people want to have that debate, I don't, um, is happening at Brockport too. So earlier today, I got to meet with an amazing group of young leaders at the Women's Center, uh, and was inspired, incredibly inspired by their strategic thinking and their in-depth analysis of the issues that are facing students on this campus. Um, as I said, I met with them at the Women's Center. If you did not know that you have a Women's Center, you do, and it is awesome. Uh, there are free condoms there. Um, <laughs> it is in the union. Uh, you should stop by. This is a resource for anyone facing uh, any issues regarding gender and sexuality. Um, this is a safe space to go to talk about having difficult issues at school. The, the Women's Center is a fabulous place to go. Um, there is Vox, which is the fabulous pro-choice group on campus that has regular meetings. Um, there is Seoul, which is the, I think they said the largest group, or one of the largest groups uh, at Brockport, which is an LBG, LGBT organization. Um, SAFE, the Sexual Assault Prevention Ed. Um, so, and then today, one of the coolest things, I don't know, did any of you see uh, Walk a Mile? And you see guys in red high heels, did any of you do it? Oh, oh that's, awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so, it's really cool. Uh, so, Walk a Mile is basically a program that asks men to put on high heels and hold signs with messages against rape culture, uh, in saying that we stand with women against rape. Um, the, let's see, there's going to be a Take Back the Night here, um, on October 23rd. Uh, if you would like more information about that, you can also contact the Women's Center. Uh, Seoul, 
Uh, I, yes, I know you get these emails, but you have to listen to me, so I'm going to do all the promotion of the awesome groups that I can. Uh, Soul uh, is having Jennifer Boylan uh, here on November 1st. She is a nationally best-selling transgender author. Um, and on October 11th, which is next Thursday, it's National Coming Out Day. Um, which is just a day to support folks who are coming out, who have come out. Um, and then the next week, the 15th through the 19th, uh, is Ally Week, uh, to stand up and show your solidarity with uh, queer LGBT folks in your community. Okay, I would just not like to do a last minute shout out to President Halstead uh, for his commitment to this fight against violence of all sorts and also his participation in Walk a Mile. If we could give him a round. Thank <laughs> you.